all these doors led to the same place, yet they each represented a different way of getting there. What door do you choose? Transgender women face this choice every day when deciding what treatment is both effective for them in their transition and safe for their overall health. You see, transgender women possess a gender identity or their internal feeling of being a woman that differs from the sex they were assigned at birth. In order to transition their physical bodies into something that represents them better, transgender women can take estrogen hormone therapy, allowing them to reach their desired levels of feminization. However, estrogen is given to transgender women in levels that far exceed what their body is used to, which can be really dangerous for their heart and circulatory system. Now, just like these doors, estrogen comes in many shapes and sizes, all leading to the same desired effects. So what door to choose? What door is right for a transgender woman and her transition process? My PhD research is here to answer that question. I wanna know the effects of estrogen hormone therapy on the heart and circulatory system of transgender women and determine the risks and benefits associated with how, how much, and how frequently estrogen is being taken. The reason for this? Current hormone therapy guidelines for transgender individuals are based on what is safe for cisgender individuals or someone whose gender identity aligns with their sex at birth. And you're probably wondering, how does that make any sense? It doesn't. And that's a fundamental problem of hormone therapy in the transgender population. My research is here to fix that. I aim to do that in two ways. First, I'll assess the medical records of transgender women and count how many individuals had events like heart attacks and strokes and determine the concoction of estrogen they were on at the time, including how much they were taking, how frequently they were taking it, and the way in which they were taking it. This will allow me to create hormone therapy guidelines that are both safe and specific for transgender women. But these events have already happened. What about predicting the risk of an event before it even occurs? How can we know what's behind the door before even opening it? The second part of my PhD research will measure the functionality of the circulatory system in transgender women, which is a measure of future adverse heart events. In doing so, I can see which women are at a greater risk of a future adverse event, allowing us to intervene and change their hormone therapy accordingly. You know, the transgender population is a continuously underserved and underrepresented community in healthcare and research. More than 80% of transgender women want to be on hormone therapy, yet only 40% are currently taking it. My research will open the door for safe hormone therapy for transgender women, empowering them to make a choice about their transition and their health.